What's up, everybody? I'm excited for our next talk today. You're hearing from my brother, one of my best friends in the whole world, and also one of the pastors of Worthy Redeemer Church, Brian Metz. He's going to be teaching us about the life of Lemuel Haynes. Listen up. Good evening, Worthy Redeemer. My name is Brian Metz. I'm one of the pastors here, and we are excited to once again welcome you to a session in Black History is Church History. Uh, this evening, I have the privilege of introducing you to the Black Puritan, Lemuel Haynes. We're excited about this series all throughout Black History Month as we celebrate uh, the work of those who contributed to the church uh, throughout history. We believe that God is making for himself a people from every tribe, tongue, and ethnicity. It's going to be a beautiful party at the marriage supper of the Lamb. One of the reasons why we're participating in this uh, series is because we believe Ephesians 4, 4 through 6. It says, There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. We get to celebrate Black History Month because it is church history. Um, Black history is church history. Well, there is more to church history than the Protestant Reformation and the Great Awakening in New England. And more black heroes of faith than Dr. King, Harriet Tubman, and Sojourner Truth. Lemuel Haynes' friend and biographer, Timothy Mather Cooley, writes in sketches of the life and character of the Reverend Lemuel Haynes. He quotes, the, the, the quote is this, In various periods of time, there have been Africans whose intellectual powers and attainments would be an ornament to any age or country. Among warriors, few have held a higher rank than Hanno and Hannibal. The poetic works of Terence were admired in the Augustan age and have survived the devastations of 2,000 years. Cyprian, bishop of Carthage, whose memory is dear to all Christendom, and Augustine, bishop of Hippo, the successful defender of the church from the Pelagic and his heresies, were sons of Africa. Black history is church history. I owe a great deal to Lemuel Haynes' biographers, Timothy Mather Cooley, John Salient, Pastor Tabiti Anyabuile, and Pastor Luke Walker, of which you will hear echoes of in this presentation. Tonight we're going to be discussing and thinking about Lemuel Haynes, a patriot, a poet, a pastor, the black Puritan, the black Republican. Lemuel Haynes uh, is someone who intrigues me because as a Calvinist and as someone who has spent time in New England, here is a man who of great piety was in the um, lineage of Jonathan Edwards' theology, uh, a new divinity school, a new light school, consistent Calvinist. And uh, I'm humbled to be able to present to you Brother Lemuel Haynes this evening. I want to thank Pastor Wade for this excellent idea, uh, for this series, and I'm honored and humbled uh, to serve alongside of him. Well, let's pray and get started. Father, we thank you for uh, history, uh, the ability to look back uh, so that we can both learn and move forward. Uh, Lord, I pray that we would be the people who don't, doesn't see history in all of its just glory and all of its uh, uh, you know, cleaned up ways, but we see the, the, the tragedy and the triumph. God, that we would see uh, the men and women who uh, came before us and whose shoulders we stand. Um, God, we pray that right now that we would be uh, illuminated to um, this, this brother who uh, for, built the church, who uh, served faithfully, who was a pillar of New England uh, religious life and political life. God, I pray that we would learn from him, that we would glean from Pastor Lemuel Haynes, um, that we would not uh, repeat the history of, uh, of the tragedy of man-stealing man and slavery, that we would see uh, in Lemuel Haynes' life a life of piety, but also a life of uh, love for fellow man and, and, and a courage to be... Um, a preacher to not just his people, but to 
uh, white congregations in a time where um, white supremacy reigned. Lord, help us. Help us tonight uh, to learn. Help us to be humbled. Help us uh, to look at the life of Lemuel Haynes. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Lemuel Haynes has said, has said, if the church is to prosper and mature, she will need faithful men to lead and care for her. The church will need men who are sound in doctrine, whose lives are guided by the word of God, and who are willing to defend the truth. The church will need to hold up as its idea those who model fidelity and love toward God. Men who will pour themselves out for the benefit of the Lord's sheep. Men of this mold are gifts to the church from her Lord. Lemuel Haynes was just such a man. Now, if we could set this up for you and his story, um, uh, I, I kept thinking as I was preparing uh, this, this talk um, uh, about uh, the musical Hamilton. You see, uh, Lemuel Haynes was a man of that day. Uh, and so it would go, how does a bastard orphan son of a Scotswoman and an African become a Puritan patriot pastor with passion? I've got no bars or rhyme skills. I'm going to leave that to Lynn manuel Miranda. But uh, if you're a fan of Hamilton, you would really dig one Lemuel Haynes. One Haynes biographer has remarked that Lemuel Haynes was a straight-up G.E.O. There is much we can learn from this preacher of providence. Lemuel Haynes, a Minuteman and soldier in the Continental Army. As a preacher, he didn't shy away of preaching against slavery, and for the ideals of liberty the young American nation had been fighting for. Well, let's talk about providence. Let's talk about the early years of Lemuel Haynes. Uh, Lemuel was born July 18, 1753 at West Hartford, Connecticut, and was the son of an African man and a white Scottish woman. It was said that she had a respectable ancestry, believed possibly to be named Alice Finch. Very little is known of his parents, however, it is believed that he was, uh, uh, he, it was his mother's employer, uh, Haynes, uh, the surname in which he got uh, named. Um, it is believed that she abandoned the baby to Haynes and he, as his guardian named him Lemuel. After the king mentioned in Proverbs, King Lemuel, who writes of the instructions given to him from his mother in Proverbs 31, perhaps this was a jab at the baby that was left with nothing from his mother. However, Lemuel would live up to his namesake, growing in wisdom and truth. At five months old, he would be uh, assigned or bonded to an indentured, as an indentured servant to Deacon David Rose of Granville, Massachusetts. De Deacon Rose was known for his piety and prayerfulness. He was loved in the Rose, Rose home and was like a son to Mrs. Rose. Lemuel had a poor education, however, and therefore was self-taught, finding himself reading in the chimney corner once the day's work had ceased. It is said of, uh, he, he is quoted as saying, I make, my, make it my rule, he said as a boy, uh, to, to know something more every night than I knew in the morning. He studied the Psalter, his spelling book, and the Bible, so he could pronounce by memory most of the texts that bore the doctrines of grace. He was his own teacher, and he wielded the sword very well. Young Lemuel often struggled with his salvation and thoughts of eternal damnation, however. Death was all around him in New England. Uh, he often passed through deep conviction of sin as a young man with constant reminders of his own mortality and eternity lurking. The shadow of death hung over Lemuel, and, and New England, like uh, the freshly falling snow in early winter. Lemuel had several personal brushes with death, being alone in a thunderstorm, uh, frightened by the, uh, the fear that this was the end, uh, fear of the uh, aurora borealis, the northern lights at that time, almost drowning and being gored by an angry ox that left scars on his face. This will cause any young man to fear and take pause and contemplate his standing before a holy God. His biographer and close friend Timothy Mather Cooley quotes Lemuel saying, One evening, 
being under the apple tree mourning my wretched situation, I hope I found the Savior. I always visit the place when I come to Granville, and when I can, I pluck some fruit from the tree and carry it home. It is sweet to my taste. I have fears that at times I am deceived, but still I hope. The Rose Home was a godly home where family worship was regular with reading of scriptures and the reading of sermons from the likes of Watts, Doddridge, Edwards, and Whitfield. On Saturday evenings, they'd gather the family around for a time of family devotion and family learning around the scriptures. In 1775, Mrs. Rose, who adopted him as her own son and trained him up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, died. It brought bitter mourning and inexpressible sorrow to Lemuel, for she treated him like a son. And in fact, it is said that she loved him more than her own children. At the age of 21, his indentured service had ended, and he volunteered as a Minuteman in 1774. By October 1776, he had enlisted in the Continental Army. Haynes volunteered just as the Continental Navy and Army suffered heavy casualties at the Battle of Valcour Bay on October 11, 1776, and General Washington's forces met defeat at the Battle of White Plains on October 28, 1776. By November 1776, Continental forces witnessed over 3,000 casualties and the loss of over 100 cannons and thousands of muskets in defeat at Fort Washington and Fort Lee. Lemuel served in the Continental Army until November 17, 1776. He had contracted typhus and was relieved of duty. Despite the dismal prospects of the revolution at this point, as a patriot, Haynes was determined to defend the, with life and tongue and pen the newly developing nation and its ideals of liberty. He headed home uh, to be with the Rose family again. The American Revolution, with its rhetoric of God-given liberty and wrongful oppression, had profound consequences for the institution of slavery and the enslaved population. At the time of the American Revolution, enslaved people made up about 20% or approximately 500,000 of the nearly 2.5 million people in British colonies. The hypocrisy of the colonists' accusations of enslavement against the British while themselves holding human beings in bondage was glaring, and Americans struggled with this issue both during and after the war. It, it is said of the, the, the British troops that they were hearing the, the shouts of liberty louder from those who drove slaves and found great hypocrisy in this pronouncement. He would write of his admiration of George Washington because of his time in the army and because Washington wrote in his will that upon his wife's death, his slaves would be emancipated. Washington was not a, a perfect president, man, or, or even general, but he had gained the admiration of Lemuel Haynes. He wrote and preached of his own allegiance to the Federalist Party. When preaching on or around Washington's birthday, he would use the occasion to contend for the liberty of all people. Haynes wrote, Liberty is equally as precious to a black man as it is to a white one, and bondage as equally as intolerable to the one as it is to the other. His unfinished essay, found many years later, Liberty Further Extended 1776, went in on the beliefs of those who were engaged in the slave trade. Never published or finished in his time, this essay is a masterpiece of biblical logic and gospel-centered assault against man-stealing and slave-holding of early America and in the British colonies. Lemuel was more than just a patriot. He was a preacher. He was a preacher who had gospel fire and political courage. After his brief stint with the Continental Army, Lemuel returned to the home of Deacon Rose. The Rose home carried a flame for the gospel, and during family worship, Lemuel often read sermons of great preachers of the day. On one such occasion, Lemuel delivered an exposition from John 3.3. 3. And upon its conclusion, the family inquired as to who authored the sermon. With Deacon Rose guessing Davies or Watts or Whitfield, but Lemuel sheepishly confided, 
that it was an original from his own pen. Deacon Rose was so impressed, he started to have Lemuel proofread, write, and deliver sermons. The family encouraged Lemuel to pastor pastoral ministry pursuits. Lemuel Haynes' pastoral career spanned 40 years. He began his life of Christian service as a, a founding member and supply pastor for the church in Middle Granville, Massachusetts. He served in Middle Granville for five years and then received ordination from the Association of Ministers in Litchfield County, Connecticut. Haynes completed his ordination in 1785 while serving a church in Torrington, Connecticut. However, despite his evident prowess as a preacher, he was never offered the pastorate of the church due to racial prejudice and resentment among the church, some churches in the area. He was licensed to preach on November 29, 1780. Five years later, he became the first African American ordained by any religious body in America. In 1804, he became the first African American to be awarded an honorary master's degree from Middlebury College. This a first in America for African Americans. He pastored mostly all white congregations. Haynes, is, Haynes was a faithful preacher of the gospel and defended the faith from the opposing encroachment of Arminianism, Universalism, and skepticism that was gaining a foothold in New England during his ministry career. Haynes rose to the challenge of Thomas Paine, a deist, and one, of, one who attacked Christianity. One of Haynes' most published works was a satirical response to Hosea Ballou, a prominent universalist preacher of the day. In a response to Ballou, entitled Universal Salvation, uh, this had over 70 printings and circulated throughout America and England. He applied his, his public discourse to um, attacking universal salvation uh, that was being, gaining ground much, through much of New England in America. He applied his public discourse to the pressing issue of chattel slavery and to the role of Christian pastors in the political arena. No, Lemuel Haynes didn't just preach the gospel. He was active in uh, confronting the political ideals of his day that came against the ideals of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But the thing is, is that Lemuel Haynes plumbed the depths of biblical Calvinism into the diamond mines of the gospel truths that held not only the reconciliation of man to God, but also the reconciliation of men to men. And he sourced uh, the fire and, and, and stoked the fire that, that, that was what flanned into flames for the American Revolution, that the liberty-pursuing republicanism, the federalism that so much uh, brought to life the liberty of the American Revolution. He did this in such amazing ways in his sermons. In fact, he, on the 25th anniversary of, the American, uh, of American independence, he, uh, he brought this, um, this sermon entitled The Nature and Importance of Republicanism. Now, you got to understand, American republicanism uh, is not the same thing as what we got today, right? Like, like, American republicanism was created and first practiced by the founding fathers in the 18th century. For them, republicanism represented more than a particular form of government. It was a way of life, a core ideology, an uncompromising commitment to liberty, and a total rejection of aristocracy. He preached this sermon to both celebrate the principles of the true republic. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and to point out the gross contradiction of enslavement of African peoples. The utter hypocrisy of the early American uh, ideal system, the early uh, American government, where you had uh, these concessions given to slaveholders and you're having people, these men, write things like life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The hypocrisy was blatant. 
it was a gross contradiction to have hold men and women and children in bondage and yet proclaim the Declaration of Independence. It was as if his Liberty Further Extended essay was constantly being revised, and that's why he probably never uh, printed it, because it could have gone by an alternate title. It could have been called Hypocrisy Further Extended. Not only was our dear friend Lemuel Haynes a patriot, not only was he a preacher, he was a Puritan. In fact, it is said that he is the most consistent Calvinist. The works of Jonathan Edwards, George Whitfield, Philip Doddridge most influenced him in his theological thought. He owed much to the evangelist and revival preaching of the Great Awakening in the 1730s and 40s. Lemuel was of the New Light School, following in the footsteps of Jonathan Edwards. He was a Jonathan Edwards (laughs) 2.0, if you will. A black Jonathan Edwards. For, you see, I feel that Lemuel had more theological consistency. As a consistent Calvinist who found the glory of God for the joy of all peoples, he was thoroughly an American Puritan. You got to understand about new divinity thought, right? Sometimes called consistent Calvinism or ultra Calvinism. Um, John Salient, uh, Haynes's biographer, would write this in in Black Puritan, Black Republican, his uh, his great work on Lemuel Haynes. You see, the new divinity followed. This is quoting uh, John Salient. The new divinity followed Jonathan Edwards' theology in emphasizing the absolute governance of God over all events, the inability of sinners to save themselves, and the inelectable selfishness of all the thoughts and deeds of the unregenerate, even their desire to be saved. Theodicy was central to the new divinity ministers who emphasized that God used sinners and their evil deeds as instruments in a plan to glorify himself and to gather the saints around him in heaven. Haynes uh, preached this. Haynes lived this. Haynes proclaimed this. uh, The providence of God, even in the transatlantic slave trade, in that it brought uh, Africans to America not to be enslaved, but to flourish by being being, uh, emancipated. Uh, be, being saved out of slavery. And the only way to do that is to, to destroy the principalities, powers of the air, um, and, and white supremacy of the day. Uh, white supremacy within the church and within our government kept slavery flourishing. Greed and selfishness kept slavery flourishing. So if you go deeper into Calvinism, you go deeper into the providence of God, God had not intended for um, this great evil of slavery uh, to continue to flourish. In fact, God's intention was to bring the flourishing of both the slave master and the slave coming together in the bonds of Christ and unity with union with Christ. Repentance has to take place in order for that to happen. Repentance on the on the those who enslaved people, and forgiveness on those who have been enslaved. All of these things would be brought about by the providence and power of God according to Haynes. In the set of Haynes, the presence, power, and providence of God infused all of life for him. He was a man of integrity in his household as he attested, as attested to from his children after his death. He was a man of parental piety. In 1783, Haynes met a 20-year-old Elizabeth Babbitt, a young white school teacher and a member of the Middle Granville Congregation. It is said that once he, she was a Christian, Lemuel would determine to court and marry her. The couple bore 10 children between 1785 and 1805. And he left a legacy of children who loved the Lord because they saw their father's piety and received his admonition to love and follow Christ. In conclusion, in 1818, conflicts with his congregation over politics and style led to a parting. 
There was some speculation, however, that the church's displeasure with Haynes stemmed mostly from racism. Haynes himself was known to say that he lived with the people of Rutland 30 years, and they were so sagacious that at the end of that time, they found out that he was a Negro, only he didn't use that word, and so turned him away. In his farewell message to the Rutland congregation, entitled, The Suffering, Support, and Reward of Faithful Ministers, Illustrated, he concluded, quote, The flower of my life has been devoted to your service. And while I lament a thousand imperfections which have attended my ministry, yet if I am not deceived, it has been my hearty desire to do something for the salvation of of your souls. Following his time in Rutland, Haynes remained active in ministry, serving despite declining health. He pastored in Manchester, Vermont from 1818 until 1822. He then returned to Granville, New York for an 11-year preaching ministry. In March of 1833, Pastor Haynes caught a gangrenous infection in one of his feet. However, he continued to preach and fulfill his ministry duties until May of that year when his poor health overtook him. Pastor Lemuel Haynes died on September 28, 1833, at the age of 80. His tombstone bears a simple inscription, written actually by his own hand as a young man. It reads, Here lies the dust of a poor, hell-deserving sinner who ventured into eternity trusting wholly on the merits of Christ for salvation, in the full belief of the great doctrines he preached while on earth. He invites his children and all who read this to trust their eternal interest on the same foundation. Lemuel Haynes, who died September 28, 1833. Historian John Salient, one of Haynes' biographers, writes that Haynes' faith and social views are better documented than those of any African American born before the luminaries of the mid-19th century. Pastor Luke Walker concludes his powerful biography on Lemuel Haynes, the Black Puritan, with these words. The story, says Cooley, of the Saturday evening sermon and the chimney corner education of Lemuel Haynes is worth of being told on the banks of the Senegal in the days of the millennium. Whatever your take, Luke says, whatever your own take on, on, of the millennium may be, we say with joyful certainty that the story of the black Puritan is worth being told in prestigious seminaries and under streetlights in every hood, and by God's grace, wherever the two shall meet. To quote Lemuel Haynes one more time, liberty and freedom is an innate principle which is unmovably placed in the human species. And to see a man aspire after it is not magnetical. Seeing his acts no ways incompatible with his own nature Liberty is a jewel which was handed down to man from the cabinet of heaven. We have much to learn from and about Pastor Lemuel Haynes. I hope you've enjoyed this evening's session, and God bless.